Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we'll be talking about a whole new tech tree line, and that, obviously, are the German battle cruisers. Now, you're not going to see these yet in the tech tree because they're still in preview, but uh, that's going to be a full line. So just to answer the very first question that um, I think someone's been posting, we are going to see all the way from tier 3 to tier 10. So in parallel to the regular battleships, we're going to have a second battle cruiser line. Now, given that there is no actual battle cruiser category, these are classified in game as battleships. What is a battle cruiser? Well, the concept of battle cruisers was kind of popular around the First World War and a little bit earlier than that. Came out of the old armored cruiser sort of idea to have something that was focused on speed and firepower, but um, at the same time, not as much on protection. And there are a couple of factors that were playing into that, because if you wanted to have something that was fast, you needed to make a relatively slim hull, and um, you needed to make a put some relatively powerful engines into these things, which meant that once you put some guns in there, which made it heavy, which then meant you needed, you needed more hull, and uh, with the engine technology at the time, you often ended up with ships that were, in order to attain these speeds, were actually as big or maybe even larger than battleships, but nowhere near as well protected, but had uh, almost comparable armament on them and obviously were faster. This went to a point, uh, especially when torpedoes were introduced, that uh, some people thought uh, we don't even need battleships anymore. We can just uh, we can just build cruisers all, all around and just be done with it. Uh, obviously that meme didn't happen because battleships did stay around. But uh, after the First World War, construction of construction continued, but soon engine technology and everything else had sort of advanced to the point that you could build a fast battleship, which is effectively the combination of the, the why not both meme and to say we can build battleships that are well protected, but are also quick at the same time. And uh, the whole thing didn't really continue. So this is an alternate history line, at least the latter half of it, the bit that isn't First World War, of what would have happened if the Germans had continued to build these things. Now, a lot of them are more or less loosely based on actually existing design drafts, somewhat similar to the Maximum Battleship line, the, altern the Alternative History American line that leads up to the Vermont, which... Uh, kind of follows the concept of what, what, what would have happened if they had uh, gone through with these concepts and actually ended up building these ships. So let's have a very quick run through and uh, I will do individual reviews as they come out. But I just want to give you a bit of an overview of the, the line, my thoughts on it and uh, sort of how it plays. So we are starting in tier three, like I said, it's a full line with the Nassau, it's nothing, uh, sorry, not with the Nassau, <laughs> why am I looking at the Nassau, with the von der Tann, the Nassau is the actual battleship, uh, and you, you can already see these things are actually larger, but uh, nothing really surprising here in tier, four, the, in tier 4, the Moltke, and uh, in tier 5, the Deflinger. Then we <coughs> get to the Mackensen, and I think that's where we are sort of ending the did actually exist sort of thing. I mean, the Mackensen or at least bits of it did exist, but I don't think they finished that one. And then in tier 7, the Prince Heinrich, which I think was an Ersatz York. But I'll have to look into the individual histories more when we get when we get to the reviews. And uh, followed in tier 8 by the Zieten. And in tier 9 by the Prince Ruprecht, which almost makes me feel of Christmas for some reason. And in tier 10 by the Schlieffen. So this is the whole new line, goes all the way up to tier 10, and uh, the Schlieffen is actually not as big as the Großer Kurfürst. There aren't many things that are beyond continents that are as large as the Großer Kurfürst. So what, how does this distinguish itself from the regular, from the regular line? The, the first hint is when we actually start, uh, start looking, I think it starts in tier 5. So let's have a look at the Deflinger very quickly, very briefly, and see what's what's special about this thing. So uh, compared to the König, you you have sort of the same main guns, but not as many of them. And you, you still get the 150 millimeter secondaries, the main secondaries, and you get auto secondaries. Uh, the, uh, this is not, uh, this is 
not something you have on the main battleship line, at least not not at this point. And this goes all the way up to the beginning. I think even the yeah even the Fondertan at tier three has auto secondaries. I mean these are Flak eighty eight, so basically Tiger tanks, but um, they are there. And if we start looking at the skills, and I think it starts at tier, yeah it starts at tier five, we get the secondary overload skill. And the secondary overload skill increases reload speed and range of all the secondaries. So both the manual secondaries and the auto secondaries. And that is a topic that is a theme all the way through. So if we start looking at uh, tier seven, another thing starts kicking in, which is that these things start having torpedoes. So uh, starting with the Prince Heinrich, we get the feeling the quadruplet torpedo launchers. These are not the uh, standard cruiser torpedoes with the 5.6 km or 5.4 kilometer range. Uh, these are these are the scout cruiser torpedoes, or also known as sea mines. They have a very long reload, but they've got and a very long range, but they are extremely slow. They uh, they can be overtaken by French destroyers, I believe, and uh, so and that keeps keeps going through as well. So we've got manual secondaries, a lot of them. We've got auto secondaries, and we've got the we've, we're starting to see torpedo launchers. It's uh, the same story at the Seaton. And it's Eaton actually uh, gets relatively large guns for her tier because this thing actually gets 406 millimeter main guns. And the Pritz Ruprecht is also on the 406s, but it starts having more torpedoes. And here we start seeing 16 torpedoes on these things, but with a very long reload, again, very long range and uh, relatively <laughs> slow torpedo speed. And then it culminates at the Schlieffen in tier 10, which also gets the 16 torpedoes, a whole bunch of auto secondaries, a whole bunch of manual secondaries, and gets the 420 millimeter guns that we used to see on the Grosser Kur first. I haven't checked if these are the exact same guns, but at least uh, that's what pre was previously there, and what I think we are now seeing at the Friedrich, yeah. So not exactly the same guns by the looks of it, and uh, we're going to have to investigate once we what I'm actually going to test these ships. I haven't. I have tested up to tier eight the the Zeton. and in the end at Schlieffen at tier ten we get the uh, over, uh, the secondary overload three, which increases by thirty percent, and we're also getting sonar on these. So no rapid reload, no precise aim, but heavy focus on the secondaries and with these long range torpedoes. The armor is generally not as good. So uh, the uh, the armor plating is in in the early tiers it's still pretty comparable, but I think some probably somewhere around mid tier. So if we for example we compare the uh, what are we going to throw in here? Let's get the the Bayern and the Mackensen in here and see how these compare armor wise. So you start seeing the theme here, especially around Citadel protection and damage reduction. The uh, the battle cruiser line is significantly less well protected compared to the actual German battleships. All right. So, um, what does it mean playstyle wise? So you you're going to have something that is has relatively short range main cannons, has sometimes fewer main guns. Uh, the Zeton especially has only six Gneisenau style, and has uh, but has a very 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 heavy focus on secondaries. Uh, these are these are not playing the same as the German main main uh, mainline battleships. They are not particularly useful at long range. They are the guns can they are German guns after all can hit pretty hard, but they really shine at mid range because the secondaries are very very long ranges. And you can use those torpedoes to a pretty devastating effect. The problem is you can't just sail into enemy fire like you can with the regular German battleship, the battering ram line, we could call it, because you don't have the armor protection. So under focus fire, these things uh, melt away very, very quickly. So they feel a lot more like British battleships in that regard, in that, uh, but with the different gimmick of having a relatively devastating damage output at mid-range, uh, or obviously at close range, than compared to the British, but armor-wise, it's a lot more like that. So, you this is not a this is not an easy to play line. 
and probably not many. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect too many people to be particularly, uh, or especially newer players to be particularly successful in higher tiers on the onset. You really do need to do need to know your positioning. Uh, you need to, to spot your your opportunities. You need to use actual island cover. So, in that regard, I think having them designated as battleships in the game is actually probably a bit detrimental. It would have been, it would have maybe been better if they had gotten the the cruiser designation and actually been on the extremely heavy cruisers. I kind of see where they're gone with this because the Germans actually considered their battle cruisers to be part of the battle line if necessary whereas the, the british had very different ideas about these things because the germans that didn't have enough ships or not in the first world war but still um it, it's it can be kind of deceptive so you don't do the typical battleship thing of sitting back and shooting from long range because you're not going to do an awful lot with that but you need de- you need to it needs a certain amount of experience to play this line and it's not uh it's not necessarily an easy line to play, but it is a very fun line to play if you like the sort of brawling kind of play style. All right, um, we are going to we're going to have a go. I, I just wanted to, to to show you a sample battle uh, because uh, and I'm going to use the Mackensen because currently these are so just to eliminate all confusion. Uh, these are tech tree ships. They're free ships. You do not need to pay for these ships. They're not premium ships. They are currently in early access. For those of you around who, who, who are new to the game and don't haven't seen this kind of thing working yet, they are currently in early access. That means you can purchase the Blitz Pass and besides all the resources and all these kind of things, all the way at the end, there. There is the Mackensen. That is still a tech tree ship. You just get a tier six tech tree ship uh, probably a month or two before it actually comes out. So. It's usually one or two months uh, that, that it takes until these things actually come officially out. And then it's on a regular tech tree line and you can grind it. So just to make that clear, this is because there are also... So you, you can get up to the Mackensen. Um, I think you can get the... Uh, you can get the tier... Yeah, you can get the Schlieffen and the, and the Prince Ruprecht from a crate. Again, these are tech tree ships. They're free ships. They're going to be available for free grinds in in a couple of months. And uh, you can get, I think, the tier 7 and 8 from uh, from an event. So this is this is just early access. But I'm going to use the Mackinson because it's probably the most the more common one that people will actually get. And uh, it's going to because it's in the Blitz Pass, it's it, the Blitz Pass if you purchase it. It has even if uh, has besides these also a lot of resources, so it's it's often a thing that people do. So uh, you can get these, and this is the sister ship of the Prinz Eitel Friedrich, and the Prinz Eitel Friedrich is an extremely excellent tier six uh, premium. So I was kind of curious to see how this plays. We'll do a full review of all these ships as we go through. Uh, I just wanted to give you a bit of an impression and an overview, and just to make sure you understand what this is all about, and you know how this is going to look. So. Enough talking, let's uh, have one round in the Mackensen. Now this is a fully secondary spec Mackensen. It's got the secondary module and the secondary elite bonus because it, it, it makes sense to, to play these. Uh, one, one thing that I, may, I forgot to mention is that these ships have a relatively good concealment. So uh, one, I think it may be a popular approach uh, for people to go and say, uh, built this as, as concealment in, in concealment mods, but um, I don't know. I probably will have more maneuverability based builds, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure. We'll find that out when we get to the higher tiers. Uh, the Mackensen does not have get, does not yet get the torpedoes, but uh, because she's in tier six, she gets um, uh, she gets tier six matchmaking, which obviously means that oftentimes you can be successful just on the, you know. Uh, you, you've got the maneuverability, and she's actually faster than the. Um, I think she's a bit faster than than her sister. The other thing, and um, I haven't been mentioning that before because I'm just going to be showing you, is that the secondaries. You, in the secondaries, you can change the ammunition type. So the secondaries normally you can't change the ammunition type on secondaries. These can fire both HE and AP shells, 
So uh, I think they come preloaded with HE, which I don't particularly. There you see um, you see the HE selector on the on the secondaries, which I don't particularly enjoy. So uh, this was a, a relatively early test game. I think the first game I've tried this shit with. So uh, in later games, once I realized that I'm actually starting actually firing um, firing HE from these from these guns, uh, then at some point I'll, I'll switch it over to the AP. Most of the time, yeah, there you go. So now I'm on AP. Most of the time you want to use the AP, especially if you know that you can penetrate things. Unless you're really trying to get a fire set or something to in concert with the torpedoes. Okay, there's an Admiral Graf Spe. Now the Graf Spe is a good ship, but um, the 350mm main guns of the Mackensen are going to make real short work. And the second reason, you can see the auto secondaries firing away as well. Now the Graf Spe is going to get the super torpedoes off, uh, which isn't going to do him an awful lot of good, because the Mackensen's got 40,000 hit points. So yes, I did a bit of chunk damage, I healed that back, and that is now a very, very dead Graf Spe, because you cannot do this kind of brawl against a German, bat a German battle cruiser at such close range. So uh, the auto secondaries may be of low caliber. The, I think even on the Schlieffen, they're only 105mm, the, uh, the actual the AA guns not the 128s that you get on, say, the um, Odin or the Corsa Kurfürst, but uh, they're still good secondaries and they have a very, very good range. So uh, that is uh, that is going to be your main damage output on these ships. And with the uh, with the AP, th this is another reason I'm saying this, these ships are probably not too friendly to, uh, to new players, because you really need to know your ammo choices. You need to know when to switch your 150mm secondaries between AP and AG, you need to know where to aim them to uh, to maximize their damage potential because these ships are all about the secondary. So besides the positioning, it's also these kind of things that are going to be quite interesting for people. Okay, we've got a Königsberg to shoot at uh, or a New York, but uh, at this point we're holding the central. We're holding two caps and uh, we're already one kill ahead, so uh, this should not be too hard. And uh, we can. <laughs> Look at the range on these secondaries. They, they almost have a seven kilometer range on the on the secondaries. And I am on AP, even though I'm shooting at a New York, which as you can see, does not does not do anything because I'm not yet in range where I can actually reliably hit the superstructure, bow section, stern section. So I, against battleships, you can switch back. And now I'm using the secondary overload, which means that the auto secondaries also get their range buffed and their reload buffed. And my secondaries are going to reload a lot faster. And I can I can do uh, an increased amount of damage. So with that, the range is really uh, is is really nice. And once the uh, once that New York is dead, I can leave him to the auto secondaries and already focus on the Königsberg because the Königsberg's got torpedoes. But it doesn't look like he's planning to do something against me. So I'll, I'm just going to let the auto secondaries finish off the New York, and then uh, shoot that unsuspecting Königsberg in the side. And yeah, these 350 millimeter main guns are making extremely short work of enemy cruisers, especially light cruisers at mid-tier, which is why these um, why why these uh, the these, these ships at tier six are so powerful as well. Because um, yeah, I think that Auweis is going to find out that Königsberg has torpedoes, but the Königsberg is not going to survive that. So let's just finish him off. And uh, I think that's pretty much the enemy team. Yeah. Um, at mid-tier, the 350s on the Mackensen are great against against light cruisers. They're punchy enough to hurt battleships, and uh, the 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 secondaries, especially with the AP, are pretty good against destroyers as well. The 350s are a really really sweet caliber against the proliferation of light cruisers that you find around mid-tier, and uh, just to hurt uh, to, to not over penetrate too much. And all in all. Uh, this is a worthy this is a worthy replacement for the Prince Eitel Friedrich if you ever if you didn't manage to get one of those because it is literally the sister ship and there are some differences but uh, this is a this is a very very good ship so far and I would I would suspect that this is probably the, going to be the sweet spot for most players because starting from tier seven it gets a little bit more difficult because uh, the abs the lack of armor is going to start showing. Uh, especially if you bottom tier in tier seven and you get into tier eight games, and uh, the positioning just becomes more uh, becomes more more important. So in in tier six or mid tier, given the general chaotic nature of mid tier battles, you can often just play as you would in a German battleship that is just faster. You don't really need to rely on your armor all that much, and uh, you don't need to worry about positioning or um, 
not not uh, not taking point, not rushing ahead, any of these kind of things. But in higher tiers, this is becoming more and more of a problem, depending also on which server you play. So especially on places like the Asian server, which te which has a tendency to be extremely campy, uh, these sort of ships are becoming very very difficult to play and um, are, are going to need a pretty high high skill floor. So don't let that deter you. Uh, I would I would definitely encourage uh, people to try this out. And if you like German battleships, then at least after tier six, I think you're really going to enjoy this line. But um, uh, don't just don't be frustrated if you find that beyond that it gets uh, the, it gets a, it gets a lot more tr a lot more difficult. They are very fun ships. Uh, they are great brawlers and uh, just just blasting through the. Uh, blasting through with with all gun, going in all guns blazing is is, is a great is a great thing. Uh, one other thing to to consider as well is that starting at tier seven, these things are going to have torpedoes, which means that every time you cycle, you're going to be taken out of your of your zoom, of your zoomed in view, which means that this is this is also a thing that you kind of need to get used to. It's similar to what you have in Igniser now, uh, and I know that a lot of people don't enjoy this. So uh, something to be aware of. All all the ships going starting at tier seven are going to have that. So in summary, uh, I, I'm very excited about this line. I think it's from what I've tested so far, definitely not an overpowered line. It's a good combination of um, of a powerful niche, but combined with some weaknesses that you need to compensate for. And um, I'll 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 be I'll be testing everything going forward, <laughs> and at some point I'll also test the lower tiers. They're just not as unique uh, as uh, as the the other ones, so that's why we'll be probably going to be doing tier seven and eight first, uh, and then nine and ten in the coming weeks. Anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.